to put before the House some significant concerns that many Irish people have about the proposed reforms to the Equality Acts. I understand that you, Minister O'Gorman, have set a deadline of the 29th of November for the consultation on the Acts, and I want to take this opportunity to state for the record a very important issue that has been identified with the proposed changes. One of the proposals put forward by the Minister is to review the grounds covered by the Act, including the proposal that gender identity be added as a protected ground. Let me be very clear here that, of course, transgender people and anyone struggling with gender-related issues deserve full protection from harassment and discrimination. The issue which needs to be carefully considered in any amendment to the law is that gender and sex are not the same, and a lack of clarity as to the definition of those terms has led to a position whereby obtaining a gender recognition cert to change your gender here in Ireland results in someone, even a man, who has not had any surgery or hormones, does not, or does not intend to, being able to access all female-only spaces as if there were a woman. If gender identity is included in the Act, obtaining a GRC will no longer be necessary to access these spaces. We have already seen the impact of conflating sex and gender in our laws following the introduction of the Gender Recognition Act in 2015. We now have a situation whereby male-born prisoners who have not transitioned but who are granted a GR cert, even those who have committed serious sexual offences, are placed in prison facilities for women. If we include gender identity as a ground in the Equality Act, without including safeguards and legal clarity as to the distinction between gender and biological sex, we will be unable to protect single-sex spaces like toilets and changing rooms from male incursion. This will only serve to enable the two most common sexual offences, voyeurism and exhibitionism. Let me be clear, this is not an attempt to paint trans people as predators. Far, far from it. It is simply a recognition that 98.8% of sex offenders are male and 80% of victims are female. We cannot, in a noble attempt to be inclusive, worsen the position of women and children as they use intimate spaces. It would be naive indeed if we did not recognise that predators will use the complete lack of safeguards to access their victims. If we have learned anything in Ireland, we have surely learned that. When self-ID was passed into law, we did not realise that it conflated sex and gender, which leads to a situation whereby any man, even a fully intact sex offender, simply has to fill out a form and they can access female-only spaces. This has serious implications for women, women's rights and children's safeguarding. We cannot make the same mistake again of rushing legislation changes without considering the actual impact. The Government has not undertaken an impact assessment on this very important legislative measure. Surely, given all that I have outlined, the Government would not be so reckless as to go ahead without a thorough impact assessment which addresses all the outcomes of such a, a change in our laws, including on the other protected grounds, not least that of sex. The Countess, a new women and children's rights advocacy group, have repeatedly highlighted the issue and concerns caused by the confusion between sex and gender in our laws. Their recently commissioned poll shows that Irish people are tolerant of gender expression and identity on a social setting and that it is to be applauded. However, people want single sex spaces and sports protected and believe people should be able to request intimate care and accommodation in healthcare settings based on the biological sex and not gender. It will be a dereliction of our duty to protect all vulnerable groups in our population if we introduce such profound changes in our legislation without full consideration of all the impacts. We must ensure that in protecting one group in, our, in, in clear need of such measures, that we do not do so at the expense of another.
Thank you, Minister. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Well, look, uh, I was relieved at the start of the Senator's contribution to see that she wasn't in any way questioning protection for, for, for trans people in our society, but I, I would really ask her in future contributions just to consider her framing in this, because the, at least on two occasions to bring in sex offenders into this, straight into this debate, bringing sex offenders to talk about voyeurism and exhibitionism in a way that suggested that these are, 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 are linked to someone being trans, I think is really, really problematic. And there are people watching uh, this house being the, the upper house of our national parliament. There are young people, people who, as you said, may be struggling with their, with their gender identity. And I think I, I would have deep concerns with the way in which you linked some of the, 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 the concepts you put together in that speech. We, the, 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 the rights of trans people in our society are not up to question as far as I'm concerned. And we have to put in place protections for trans people. And that's what we're seeking to do in amending, in, 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 in initiating this consultation on the amending of, of, uh, of, of equality legislation. And I think it's also very important to say we are at the start of this process. We are undertaking a public consultation which will inform proposals that will come forward, which will then go to a pre-legislative scrutiny process, which will then come before these houses. So to suggest that there's some sort of jump or some sort of, you know, um, something is being done here secretly is something that I want to push back on very strongly. And we have also extended the consultation period uh, for, for the, the consultation on the, equal, the, the equality legislation. The government is committed to building a fair and equal society where nobody faces discrimination. And part of that work uh, in creating an equal society is developing whole of government strategies, which includes actions aimed at addressing particular inequalities, like the National Strategy for Women and Girls, like NITRAS, the, Tra the Traveller and Roaming in Inclusion Strategy. And another key element is putting in place legislation that prohibits discrimination and which provides access to redress for those who have been discriminated against. Here in Ireland, we have the Equal Status Act and the Employment Equality Acts and they look at, uh, at, at discrimination on a, a range of statuses. We know marital status, family status, sexual orientation, gender, membership of the travelling community. And I begun the review of the Equality Act to examine the scope and the operation of the legislation to ensure that it offers effective protections and accessible remedies to those who experience discrimination. And among the issues the programme of government have committed to is to look at widening the grounds of, 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 of gender, look at the the introduction of, of discrimination based on socio-economic status as well. Um, and I think you will see under the national LGBTI plus exclusion, uh, inclusion strategy, it recognises the need to ensure adequate protection against discrimination for transgendered, non-conforming and intersex people. Um, and that is part of the issues that we'll be looking at in, 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 in this review, and we will undertake this review Everyone's entitled to participate uh, in, in the review. There will be that pre-legislative process. But I think it is really, really important that we recognise that trans people are deeply vulnerable in our society. If you look at the suicide rates among trans people, they are much higher than other parts of, uh, of, of society. So it's incumbent on all of us to be very careful with the language we use, be very careful with the concepts we use, and ensure that no one who is trans in this country feels that their rights, or indeed their existence in our society, is in any way up for debate in this House. Thank you. Minister. Shani Dorp. Thank, uh, thank you, thank you um, Minister, for your, your comments on, on, my, on my speech. Um, I understand um, the difficulties um, that youth and trans people have with, with regard to their sexuality. I've had many children in my care who may have been even thrown out of their own homes because of their sexuality. And I've had a number of tra trans children um, through my care uh, as a foster parent. Um, obviously, I've raised some uh, issues here this morning that uh, have caused deep offence to you which I, uh, and to the trans community, which I certainly don't want to do. Um, but I look forward to, to the report. I look forward to, to uh, um, receiving that report when it, when it is due out. Thank you. 
Good. Thanks, Chair. Well, look, uh, it's not a case. I, I'm not offended. I'm just saying I think we have to be very, very careful with the language we use in this area. And I think you acknowledge, uh, and from your own experience as a foster, uh, uh, as a foster parent, you, you, you know yourself, you know better than I know about the sensitivities of, of children and, and uh, the pressures they face, and particularly where, where, where a child may, may be, may be uh, struggling with their, with their gender identity. But that's why the language we use here is extremely important and when we talk about these issues and when we talk about concerns that people have, um, you know, re referencing, bringing the debate straight to the worst case scenario straight away I think is, is problematic, is not the way to go. But look, I, I accept um, this, this is a debate, this is an issue that we'll be looking at when this legislation comes for pre-legislative scrutiny. It will probably be, uh, come through, through the Children's Committee where you're of course represented yourself. Uh, so we will have an opportunity to look at these issues in detail. But again, I think it is really important to reiterate on the floor of this House that the rights of trans people and the existence of trans people in our country is not a matter for debate. Uh, my my no, point no. was all about safeguarding, uh, the safeguarding of women and children here, and that is what my point is about here this morning. Thank you.